church where we freely give fruit cups, Jean. Okay. <laughs> Next week, I'm not so sure. But welcome to The Rock Church. We're so excited to have you guys here today. God, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for the sunshine, for the warm weather that is coming, for spring. Letting all the animals and the birds start singing and the grass growing and the trees getting green. God, let that spirit of spring be sprung in our lives this morning. Let something new in our hearts just start to grow. That love, that passion for you. Whether it be the first time that something like that has happened or a rebirth of the plans and the vision that you've given us through the ages. God, we stand here today, we're gonna stand, we're gonna sing, we're gonna clap our hands, and it's gonna be an awesome moment of celebration to you. And God, we thank you for the things and the words that are to come. Amen. If you guys wanna stand up, we're going to get our arms clapping and our feet stomping. We're going to have an awesome time in worship today. Let's go.
We're going to sing this, and we're going to say this this morning. Here we go. And I may not know what a day may bring, but I know who bring the day. That's right. And on the darkest night, when I cannot see, it's still Sing it out. Yeah. 
stuff going on here today, in case you didn't notice. There were weird things in the room. You'll find out what's going on soon. <laughs> hey, I'm Bethany. If I haven't met you yet, I think I met most of you. Not sure. Sometimes I miss people. I try not to, but I'm Bethany. I'm the outreach pastor here at the Rock Church, and we had a great night of outreach last night at Rock You Zone whole bunch of new people that we have never seen before, and I love that. And I was like, hey, how'd you hear about this? And some people said friends. Some people said they heard about it from a birthday party. Some people said they saw it on Facebook. So keep sharing things. Terry's going to say that again later. Yeah. Keep sharing things. You never know when someone who's a friend of yours is a friend of someone sees what's happening here, and they come and they come to Rocky Zone, they come to church. Maybe uh, Easter Explosion is coming up in a couple months, so you don't want to miss out on that. Yeah, you? you can sign up for that back in the back if you didn't sign yep. up yet or if or you didn't you text eggs. Or you can text the word eggs to the Rock Church number. That would be awesome. That would be eggy. Very eggy, yes. <laughs> That's how you get on the list. And I put you on a team, and we have all kinds of, it's great. Ne next week, hopefully, we're going to have a video. So if you've never experienced Easter yes, Explosion. Yes, we're working on that, hopefully. You can see it, yes. Absolutely. And if you're visiting with us here today and I didn't catch you, I would love it if you would go to our website, yourrock.org, yeah. <laughs> and click on that little I'm new thing and put your info in there because then I can follow up. And also, if you want to give, you can do that at our website, that little purple plus sign, or in the back. And speaking of giving. Yes, we have a thank you for special. what you have given, but we have a special offering this morning for our crazy kids. And here we just wanted to show you what all your money goes to. Here they come. So here comes the crazy, crazy kids. Kid. Just in case you're wondering. I don't know how many we have today. 30? 30 kids today. 30 kids in this service. In this service. So this is why we want to make our crazy kids more crazy than what they are, because we want them to see it. Come on, Molly. Over here. Molly's like, I ain't going up there. <laughs> So these are all the kids that whenever you give, and that's why we're going to be doing the next gen wing. You know, we made a decision probably about five or six years ago to really invest heavily into kids. Yeah. And we said that, you Come know what, on, if guys. we did that, it would change. And, you know, most churches in America don't like to do this kind of stuff. They think they yeah, need to invest in the adults and the kids get the leftovers. I always want it to be where our kids get the best and you guys get the leftovers. I think that's better. So this is what you're giving to this morning, and we're going to be taking the crazy kids' room and making it more crazy. They even got ref outfits now. You see that? So if you want to know what happens whenever your kids get in a fight back there, we just let them duke it out. We got referees back there to take care of it. It's all good. So yeah, give these guys a hand for all the kids. 
that God's blessed us with in our church. Hey, you guys rock. You can go back now. Thank you. We just wanted to show them. Good luck with that. You can jump off the stage. Jump. Hey, jump. Anyone else jumping off the stage? It's much more fun jumping off the stage. I get to annoy all the kids all the time. It's, pretty, it's fun. I enjoy it. Hey, dude, you're going that way. They're leaving you. <laughs> he takes after his dad. He's a little slow. Wait, you lost your shoe. <laughs> he lost his shoe. Yep. That was awesome. <laughs> so if you decide to give today for the Crazy Kids offering and you're giving online, you can just choose the special under the drop-down box of where you want to give. Or if you're putting it in the box, you can write on the little... Yeah, we're going to have them holding envelope. plots in the back of the church. Uh, I was supposed to do that at first <laughs> service and I completely forgot. And everyone's like, where's the you plot? And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> So I apologize for that, but we will have them out there for plots. I think Tony has a competition running of which kid can get the most money. <laughs> 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 so just to let you know, but we thank you guys for giving. It's going to be really cool. We're going to take our next gen wing to the next level yes. and, and stuff like that. And it's going to be amazing. And pray for Bethany and I, because we got some really cool meetings going on this week. Yes. And we might have some really exciting news to share with you next week. We'll find out what happens, but... We're just going to play it by ear and see what God's up to, yeah. and it's going to be amazing. Yeah, and then we want you to share, get our message, and you see it. We'd love it if you would yeah. share it and help us to share it. The more you yeah. share, the more we actually get our algorithm gets built up, yeah. and the more things get shown to people, so we're just trying to play the game. If you don't like it, just put a thought and say, you know, this message was really convicting to me, and Pastor <laughs> Terry really annoyed me, but I decided to share it anyway. You know, just be honest. Do don't lie, anyway. all right? It's whatever you do. So don't say it was good when you didn't think it was good. Just spess up and say, I was convicted, and it, it hurt my feelings, but I'm okay. <laughs> but God's good all the time. And then we still have some opportunities. I just want to announce them one more time that we need tech people. Yes. And we need some worship people. Um, we really need to start working on building another worship team and du duplicating some of the things going yeah. on in our lives. And you need to step up and do that. We need sound people. We need some men's ministry. And we need some greeter people. Greeter people. I just put it as greeter <laughs> people. I changed it up this week. So that's what we need. So if you'd like to be involved, we want you to be involved. Yes. We want to be a church where you just don't come and sit, but you get right. involved. And we've made Part it on Sunday morning. You can get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, we can teach you how to run sound. Sound, you can sit in your seat with an iPad yep. and just run the sound and, and all that kind of stuff. It's really easy to do if you have an ear that hears sound. <laughs> if you kind of like have tinnitus and you're tone deaf, we probably don't want you running sound, just but to let you know. But there's other things you can All right. Do. But we'll pray for you that God will heal you, uh -huh. and then you can run sound. Okay, that works. So God's good all the time. I have a question. Are we Rock Climbing Tuesday? We are not because Rock Climbing Tuesday. It is Valentine's, it is Valentine's Day. Day. Yes. So it's Valentine's Day. Just to let you know, if you go to um, Dollar General, look for a Valentine's Day card. They're not in the normal place. You have to look at the end cap. <laughs> All right? Ooh. Just to let you know. Does that mean you already did No, I was Valentine's buying one for my daughter. Oh, okay. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, honey, I bought you a Valentine's Day card. That's nice. It is I'm nice. I try to be it. nice. <laughs> she was being annoyed this morning that I was tickling her, and she's like, you're so annoying. I'm like, honey, you need to change your perspective. Yes. I said, you need to realize I'm fun and not annoying. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so, so God's fun. good. I um, The worship team actually sent me a, a video this morning, of, and it said, our pastor, and it was a um, a cockatiel. Cockatoo, what are they called? Whatever they're called, the little white bird. And there was an owl sitting beside it, and it was taking its beak and pulling its feathers out and grabbing it with its, with its, with its uh, foot and all that kind of stuff. And I think they were insinuating that was me. And I actually said, yes, fun Tony is annoying, isn't he? That's what I said. <laughs> it's called deflect and defer. Hey, we're really glad you're here this morning. Um, it's going to be different this morning. I told you I was going to be preaching about cake, and I'm going to preach about cake this morning. And good news is you're going to get to sample some cake this morning, just to let you know. But 
God gave me a message last week when I was out for my prayer walk about cake. Next week I'm going to be doing about army bases and bases. And actually we have somebody in our church that's very involved in the military. Um, Dave, what level are you now? Major? All right, he's a major. He actually heads up Western PA? You, you head up what, Western PA? Southwestern PA Infantry Reserves. So he gets to play with machine guns and all that kind of fun stuff and commands that kind of stuff. So he's going to help me next week in the in message about bases. About, I want you to understand something. Well, it's just going to be cool. I don't want to get in my head of myself. So today we're going to talk about cake. How many people like cake? Good. You're going to enjoy it because you're going to get some cake. If you already had cake before in the first service, you don't get it in the second service because we don't want you to be unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I want to take you on a journey this morning, and I want to share with you what God shared with me, and I'm going to refer to this message a lot even in times to come, because I want you to understand this whole thing about God, that God showed my heart and my life as I was out walking and talking to God and asking. I ask a lot of questions to God. I am always challenging what I've been taught. I'm always challenging the norms. I'm always asking why. That is my personality. If you don't believe me, ask my wife and she'll tell you that I am always that way. I want to know why. I don't just believe just because they say that's the way it is, it bothers me because I don't want it to be the way it is. I want to know the truth because my Bible says you know the truth and the truth sets you free. And I want the world to be free. I want to be free. I want to live in the promises of God. You know, I remember listening to somebody's testimony whenever I was a kid, and and it was an older lady who was sitting there, and they were asking her whether she was afraid to die and stuff like that. And she's like, I'm just trying to get so wrapped up in the glory of God that when I die, I don't even know I'm dead. And I thought, man, that's a good response. In other words, she wanted to live so close to God that it was just like, moving right over that she was just like wow this is really cool and I thought what a way to live what an attitude to have that I just want to get so close to God that whenever I'm dead it's just like wow I'm just keep on living and just keep on doing it because God's so good and he's so cool this one I want to remind you of one more time and it's Isaiah chapter 43 verse number 19 and I want you to read that what's it say what's God going to do something new now he's speaking to all of us Now, the cool part about God, and you might sit there and say, why do we do the things we do? Uh, I remember whenever Lee Rierick, is Lee Rierick in this service? Oh, there you are. Lee almost overlooked you. Um, Whenever Lee came, I I don't know if you remember this, Lee, or not, but we used to have, like, Thanksgiving thankful services and stuff like that on, like, Wednesday night before Thanksgiving, and we'd talk about what we would testify about. And I'll never forget his comment. This is what Lee said. We got to him, and he's like, I'm just glad I'm here because one thing I learned about Pastor Terry, if it's one way today, it'll change tomorrow. And that is pretty much the way I am. I like change. I don't like normal. I don't like to be normal. I don't like to act normal, believe that or not. I I like to sit there, and that's why I challenge so much. I I want you to understand God's always doing something new, and he wants you to be part of it. You know, I know in America right now, in the church world, there's a lot of rumbling, like, well, you think Jesus is coming? Well, it's getting really bad. Well, all this kind of stuff. I hear people quote this scripture, and it's biblical. In the last days, perilous times will come, and I can go through all those scriptures of the perilous times. But what they miss is God also said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And you know what? I've learned that when we get in the word of God, when we get into life, we can either live on the negative side or the positive side. And I want you to experience living on that positive side of God and walking with God and talking with God. And God says, I want to do a new thing. I want to do something brand new. That's why I promise you that if you come to church next year at this time, the songs will be different next year than they will be this year. Now, we might do some of them, but they won't all be the same because I want to know new songs. I want to sing something different. I want you to have something, a new song in your heart that you can sing and praise God. He goes on and he says, it's already happening. He says, Don't you recognize it? And you've got to get that. Don't you recognize what God's doing? This is the year of opportunities. God has spoken so much to my heart all the way back in January 1st. I was like, God, what are you going to do this year? Because I asked that question. I'm like, God, what's, what's 2023? God has blessed us. Everyone say blessed us. You know, every year God has blessed you with a brand new year to start over. 
to sit there and say, okay, it's January. Now listen, we're already almost two months in. You know that? We're halfway through February. When you celebrate Valentine's Day, you have halfway through the month of February. You want to get that. And God sits there every year. I believe he designed our, our solar system and designed everything about our earth that every year we get 365 days, once in a while, 366 days, that we get to restart and rethink. And it's so amazing to me. I love watching the advertisements. And how many know that right after Christmas, you can pick up a flyer or go online and look, and the thing that's going to be on sale is always exercise equipment. Right? Because New Year's Eve, when, or New, they're like, I'm going to get in shape this year. Yeah, let's buy this. Let's buy that. And if you look on Facebook Marketplace in March, April, May, you can buy their exercise equipment for like 33% off because now it's drying clothes. Right? That's what happens to it. And we sit there and we go, oh, I've got to have this. We're like going to, oh, I'm going to get in shape. And we miss a day, and we miss another day, and we miss another day, and well, we're this far in, might as well just forget about it now. And we've got to realize that God wants you to experience Him supernaturally, and the key to this is, is possessing and living in your promised land. And I've been saying that a lot. God's going to give you opportunities this year for you to walk through. And opportunity is just that. It is an opportunity at that moment to change the direction of your life or change the direction of somebody else's life, that if you don't take that opportunity, it will be missed and you'll never have the opportunity again. Now, I don't know about you, but I've missed a lot of opportunities in my life. Out of my own fear, out of my own wondering, about my own doubt, what if God's not in it? Listen, can I tell you something? If you're praying and saying, God, open a door for me and a door opens for you, you'll walk through it. Now, I know I was raised differently than what I just taught you right there because I was always like, they were like, well, you better make sure it's not the devil opening the door. Well, if I'm praying for God to open the door, so you're telling me the devil's as strong as God so he can open a door for me and try to fool me too? No, I don't believe that stuff. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I walk with him and I talk with him and I know his voice. And it also says in the word of God in the Old Testament, I will hear a voice behind me saying, this is the way, walk in it, and I'll know it's God and when it's not God. All right? So we get that. So my goal is to get you to possess that promised land. Now, that's a cornfield. About 10 years ago, I was on a missions trip to Baltimore, Maryland, where we were redoing a church and working on a church, and uh, I was part of the construction team there. And I remember I was walking past, to get to our house we were staying in, we had to walk past this cornfield, and one morning, God was just talking to my heart as I was out praying, and God said, pick a ear of corn. Now, I wasn't stealing because God told me to do it, Okay. So I picked the ear of corn, and I peeled it all off, and I sat there, and I looked at this ear of corn, and God said, count the kernels. And if I remember the count, I think it was 429 or somewhere right around there. Everyone get that? That started with one kernel of corn. And that, now, listen, on the ones that I was looking at, they had two ears of corn on every stalk. It was hybrid corn, Right? So that one kernel of corn, the one I picked, and I, I put them in a jar and I saved them for a long time because it was just amazing to me. But God brought that scripture to my mind, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it brings forth fruit. And I want you to understand that that is the principle of God, where we're willing to sit there and say, God, I'm going to crucify my flesh, my ideas, my ways, because God, I want to experience you. Now, this morning I'm going to get into it and some people are going to get mad at me. I just want to tell you straight up, because I'm going to tell you what's broken in your life, but you're not going to want to hear it. Because you're going to be sitting there saying, well, yeah, that's true, but you know, you don't understand. And you're going to make all the excuses that you've been making for a really long time. Or this morning can be an opportunity where you make up your mind that I'm going to change the direction of my life because I want to start living in the blessings of God. I want to experience God. I was listening to an interview that Joe Rogan was actually sitting there on, on uh YouTube, and he was interviewing a guy, and he was sitting there, and this guy used to be on MTV. He's now 58 years old, and he was interviewing him. He, all his life, he has studied, like, lies and conspiracies, and he's been really good at it. And he has the biggest podcast in the United States. I don't remember the guy's name. It's Matt somebody. And he sat there, and he was talking with them, and, and he's going on, and he's like, I, I studied the JFK thing. I studied the moon landing. I studied this. I studied that. And he says, I love conspiracies. And Joe Reagan said, so now what? He says, I just started studying God. 
He says, I made up my mind that, you know what, I think, I didn't know if it was the biggest conspiracy in the world that God was. And, and Joe Rogan looked at him and said, so what's up? He's like, I'm a Christian now. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, do you know how much evidence there is that Jesus Christ was here on earth? And he went through because he was so good at doing conspiracies. He went into the Bible, went into books, went into history. He's like, do you realize that if it was a conspiracy, it would be impossible? He says, it's so crazy. He's like, well, for thousands of years, this guy just keeps coming up. There's more books written about him. There's more talk about him. There's more. And he was just going on to proving it wasn't a conspiracy because how a conspiracy works. And Joe Rogan said something that really blew me away, because I don't know how Christian is, because he sits there and puffs on a cigar and all that stuff, and whatever. It's all good. But he sat there, and he says, you know what's really crazy to me, dude? And with a cigar in his hand, he's like, what's that? He's like, all these people who are afraid of being duped, but their life's falling apart. He says, their mental state's crazy. He said, but they don't want to be duped about Jesus. He says, but when you get Jesus in your life, he says, you know what I've learned it's like? He says, it's like rewriting the code, you know, like computer code. And you put the code in your life, and he says, it just starts changing things in your life. Now, this was Joe Rogan talking. I'm like, this is a really good interview. And I want you to understand that, you know what, here's people that didn't even know Jesus. One guy was on MTV. Joe Rogan, if you would have listened to his podcast, I don't know, I'll say a year and a half ago, he would have totally not been into it, and now he's getting into Jesus, and God's getting all of his life, and he won't admit he's a Christian yet. Notice I said yet. But God's working on him. And I want you to understand that that's what God does. God wants to radically change your life. And I want to give you just a couple of scriptures before I get into the meat of my message. And that's this one. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You're a conqueror. You might not feel like a conqueror today. You might not be living like a conqueror today. You might not be doing those things. But God says you are a conqueror. That you overcome, that you got the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ in your life. Whether you want it or not is up to you. Remember, an opportunity is a door that opens that if I choose to walk through it, my life will be changed. But if I choose to reject it, my life will stay the same or get worse. Right? We all, if I went around this room and said, who has a blown opportunity? They'd like to talk about If you would share it, I want to tell you what. We could feel the rest of the day of us all talking about ways that we blew and missed opportunities where we did things the wrong way and they had terrible consequences all because we didn't do it through the way that God wanted us to do it and take the opportunities that God presented in our lives. Somebody give me a Presbyterian nod at least. All right, good. All right, you got that, right? Anyone give me, give me a Baptist? Amen. All right, yeah, we're getting you there. Praise God. Getting you a little closer every day. All right, he goes on and he says, 1 John 4, he says, You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. You know what annoys me as Christians walking around acting like the devil's in control and God's dead? I got a word for you this morning. He's not dead. He's only dead if you let him be dead in your life. If you walk in the victory, he's in the victory. If you walk in the pain, he's in the pain. But you know what? I've learned that some Christians just love to get stuck in the pain and the misery and the doubt. All right, I got to go somewhere because we're going good this morning. He says, I write you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. Whose name? Jesus' name. He goes on and he says, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. There's number one. You've got to know him. He goes on and he says, I write to you, young men. He says, because you have overcome the evil one. Now, you've got to realize when John is writing to these people, he's not necessarily writing to age. He's writing to something different. He's writing to spiritual maturity. Everyone got that? He's writing to up and down where I'm living... Just because I'm old doesn't make me old in God. Just because I'm young doesn't make me young in God. You know what I've learned? Some young people know God better than old people. How many know that? When I was about 21 years old, I started teaching in the Sunday school class in the church that I was going to. I was on fire for God. I mean, God just radically changed my life, filled me with the Holy Spirit. I knew he'd call me to preach, and I was like, any chance I could. And I started teaching the adult Sunday school class which was really amazing for my age. And, and I remember I was like, man, God's so cool. And in the back of the room, right back there, someone raised their hand, and it was, his name was Ernie. No, not off of the Muppets. Or what was Ernie? Where was Ernie? Sesame Street, thank you. And, and he raised his hand, and this is what he said. I know you're excited about God. When you get my age, you'll see. He was like the biggest giver in our church and all those kind of things, and I didn't handle it well. 
I know it's hard for you to believe that I didn't handle it well. But I looked at him and I said, all I know is when I get old, I won't be like you. <laughs> now, that probably wasn't the best response, but I couldn't think of anything else. Because you know what? My Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, right? So the same power that rose him from the dead lives in you and he, me. We've got to get that. That same anointing works in me and works in you. And God wants you to experience his presence and the freedom of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is not about coming to the rock. This is not about being religious. This is about experiencing God and let God give you the opportunities and walk through the door. One of the things that Joe Rogan said is he said, people will sit there and be depressed, anxious, scared, afraid, and let their lives totally be miserable because they don't want to be duped by Christianity. He's like, how crazy is that? And the other guy said, I don't know. That's pretty crazy. And, and are you there? Are you one of those people that are doing that? God wants to radically change your life. Glory to God. And he goes on and he says, I write to you, dear children, because you have known the Father. All right, so those are really cool scriptures. I like them. They get me excited. But you know what? Let's talk about something this morning. I want to talk about, ready for this? Chocolate cake. Yeah, we're going to talk about cake today. And you're going to get it. It's a word picture that I made. Now, I did something. I went to the best person that I know, and her head's going to get swelled. And I'll probably have to say something bad about her later to make her head deflate so that Tony can take her home. But I'm going to give you the best baker that I know in the church, and that's Janine. She is. She's really good at baking. And she makes, like, a killer chocolate cake. And I've got some up here. I mean, it's killer. It's got chocolate icing. Is anyone hungry? Wait, wait. Hold on. Sniff it. Oh, chocolate cake. Yeah. How many know chocolate cake's really good? Yeah, she makes good cake. I'm serious. It's homemade. It ain't, it ain't out of Betty Crocker, is it? Okay, because I told everyone it wasn't, so I didn't want to be lying. So just checking. All right. So she makes good cake. Every time for my birthday and every once in a while, I'll say, you know, you haven't made me a cake in a really long time. Matter of fact, she baked all the cake that you're going to get to experience today. And I said, you know, you ought to just bake one for your pastor that he can take home with him. So I got cake. It's not for Bethany. It's for me. Just to let you know that. Trust me, it'll be a fight because I'll probably get a morsel out of it because she loves chocolate. But anyhow, so what's the number one key to chocolate cake? I heard chocolate. I heard cocoa. Anybody? I heard sugar. I think the number one key to chocolate cake is called the recipe. How many know that? How many know that if I gave you all the ingredients that are in chocolate cake and I asked you to make a cake this morning, there'd be a whole lot of different cakes going on in here. Anyone in here not have a baking thumb that would sit there and your cake would turn out like really, really, really bad? Yeah, that's me. I, I tried to make one one day out of the box and it said add so much oil and I don't know what I read, but it was way more oil than it was. And I baked this cake forever and it never got hard. I just kept baking it. And baby, I'm like, what's wrong with this thing? And I like got out and tried to pull it out of the pan. The top finally got hard. I'm like, yeah, I pulled it out and this one. <laughs> all right. So it all depends on the recipe, right? So I want to take you on a journey this morning, and I'm gonna need some samplers of some chocolate tape, but don't worry, everyone's gonna get some. So my cake giver outers are going to start passing out cake at this time, because you're gonna get cake. Don't make a mess with it. Or I'll never give you cake again. All right? Just let you know. So I made you some cake. And I, there's a reason why I did this. You're going to understand that you're going to get it. But I need some, some people that, you know, can be my samplers and be up here. I already picked one. One's Liz. So come on, Liz. You're going to be my guest at my table. And you actually get to get. Now, I just got to tell you, mine has chocolate icing on it. Yours doesn't. <laughs> Sucks to be you. That's all I can say. We didn't want to make a mess. All right? So, I got chocolate ice cream. So, I need another person who'd like to volunteer and be my sampler and would like to eat some cake with me. No, you have to be in a dad all. You kids are way too eager. You get enough chocolate, Sammy. You need to not have, have it. Let's see. Who would like to be the person who doesn't want to be up here? Who doesn't want to be up here? Jenna, I know you, you don't want to be up here. Come on up here. Yes. <laughs> see, I knew she didn't want to be up here. She went, oh, my God. Oh, 
you're only going to be on Facebook Live and everyone's going to stare at you and it's going, come on, come have a seat at my table. Yeah, it's so cool. Welcome to my table. She's so happy to be here. Isn't this thrilling? So we did something. Tony, are you going to come help me today? So whenever I asked Janine to build me a cake, what God showed me in my prayer walk last week as I was out praying is God told me it's all about following the recipe. So I asked Janine if she could mess up a cake. And she said, well, I've made it so many times that I can't. And she said, I'll let Tony. <laughs> so Tony is my compadre. He's even got his Santa Claus apron on. Absolutely. No. Oh, he's it's a little the, late, a little out of season. Hey, it's the apron that makes the chef. It, yes, it is the apron that makes the chef. So Tony made me some chocolate cake too. <laughs> Isn't that just look like the yummiest chocolate cake? Does everyone see that yummy? Here you want to see it? Look at this. Check it out. That's chocolate cake. So, Tony, how'd you make this wonderful recipe? Well, so, listen. You know, I got this apron, like I said. You're so, Chef, Chef so Latone. This makes me a baker. Oh, that's because right. You put the apron on. How many know if you got the clothes, you're in? <laughs> I mean, clothes are half the battle. <laughs> Don't matter if you can play sports or not, as long as you look good trying, right? <laughs> Nobody knows to get on the quarter or on the football field, right? And then the truth comes out. So he put the apron on. You steal that yep. out of your wife's closet? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I knew that. <laughs> Are you having fun, um, Jenna? You enjoying being up here? Everyone's staring at you. You get to have some of my cake. <laughs> She's oh, wondering. Man. He's going to tell you. He, he's, so, he's the man. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. I've made this cake about Here, you guys times. can taste this. This is the good cake. Go ahead. Enjoy <laughs> some cake. No, you have to try a good one first. Yeah. So I've made <laughs> Did the Did you get cake. the eye roll I got off of her? That's what Garrett puts up with all the time. <laughs> The, I, I got the eye roll right there. Here, just to let you know, I got it. How's that cake? <laughs> she likes that cake. All right, so has everyone got cake? Anyone not have cake? <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. Eat your cake. Have some cake. Taste it out. Try it. See if it's good cake or bad cake. All right. How's the cake? Nice, moist, good cake, right? Yeah. So, go ahead. Tell us how you made this cake. <laughs> yeah, so here's It the looks thing. like it has a little mold or burn there something. or something. I don't know what that is. <laughs> that piece is for you. Here, we got to get All you guys. Right. Here, go. You talk. All I'll right, get them a good talk. piece. You're gonna get you need Tony's <laughs> cake. All right. So, here's the thing. I've made this cake probably about three times before, and it's come out like this one. So... You know, I've done it. I figured I could do it again, right? I looked at the recipe oh, the you. night before. Hey, does I anyone want to try a piece of Tony's cake? Oh, we got a couple. Oh, we got a couple. <laughs> All right, come on up and get some cake here. You yeah, so the Bethany, night before, where, I looked at the at? recipe. Steve, you can come feed him cake. <laughs> Michelle, you want to give him cake? I need someone to scoop it out. Oh, come on, you bunch of... Get up here. So I need someone to dish out the cake. All right, come on, dish it out. Here, dish it out. Give him some cake. Don't get it in the floor. All right? You saved me a piece of that. Oh, good. Take, take a piece <laughs> out. Because a good chef always takes a bite of his yes, own yes. stuff. Yes, yes. So make sure I get a piece. <laughs> 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 You'll find out why <laughs> in a little bit. A so little yeah, runny, so he says. I looked the uh, recipe over the night before. Yeah? I didn't need it the next day because I already looked at it. I mean, it's kind of like people Christians with the Bible, right? I looked at my Bible once. What do I need my Bible for, right? I mean, okay, I got this Christian thing down. You, you got it, right? Yeah. I absolutely. mean, I know what goes in it. You know, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Father. I mean, <laughs> I'm good to go. I went to church twice. You know, it wasn't, I don't know what kind of church it was, but, I, I, you know, I did it. Are you giving that to your dad? Make sure your dad gets a bite of that, too. Your mom really wants that. She loves <laughs> chocolate. Anyone else want to try the Tony? Tony, I don't know what's going on, man. I don't know, I don't know why nobody I, I wants just that. I don't understand why. <laughs> Anyone else? Come on, get a piece of cake. 
And you know, I didn't want to dirty too many dishes either. <laughs> so I decided, you know what? I don't uh, need I an mean, extra like bowl. a Christian, you know why? Uh, why do it that way? Why dirty more dishes? You gotta wash more. Absolutely. You don't have a dishwasher, right? No, I gotta oh, do my See, method. I understand that completely. So I mixed it all in the baking dish. Um, save a bowl. Yeah. Now I did make sure that I sprayed it so it didn't, with the uh, pans. So oh, you didn't. need that. See, <coughs> I'm, I'm good. And uh, yeah, so I just threw it in the all threw it in the bowl. I didn't even use measuring uh, utensils. Oh, you're I, so good oh. at you. I mean, you're Chef Tony. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sorry, Chef Le Tournay. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have to keep it right, right? <laughs> um, I actually prefer Sh Chef Antonio. Oh, Chef Antonio. <laughs> How about Chef Antonioski? Antonioski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but I'm really good. I've got, like, this photographic memory. I yeah, you guys can go the, ahead and taste it so um, you get the... Measurements. Flavor. I know what yeah. two cups is. I know what three cups is. Yeah. So I just threw it all in there. And you know what? I didn't really have a lot of time, so I didn't bother mixing it up much. I mean, so I, I understand that because how many you know Christians don't have much time to study the Bible and learn about God and, you know, do it the right way. So, I mean, we just throw it in the pan. Don't have a lot of time. Yeah, and, you know, I know I'm not really racist, but I did put the white stuff on the one side and the chocolate well, stuff on the other. Well, that's good. That's a good you know, way to do keep it. Keep them all separated. Yeah, and then, you know, of course with the water, I go, how's that cake? Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> Does that give you any semblance of how this cake is? <laughs> so... You know, and then the water, you know, the water <laughs> is a little harder water. to Even though they're the good stuff, it'll make it better. So <laughs> what I did with the water, it said two cups of water, right? So any cup will do, right? Uh, a cup's a cup is a <laughs> cup, <laughs> right? I mean, who needs cups? I mean, I see people yeah. use this stuff, you know. With the lines yeah, who it? needs that? <laughs> Right? I mean, I was always taught color outside the lines. It still looks good. I mean, <laughs> they said, hey, it looked as good as people colored in the lines because, you know, everyone does good whenever they just color, right? <laughs> yeah, so I just dumped two of these in there. You know, this is about 18 ounces. Did you swallow it? <laughs> All right, good job. And, um, Want another piece? So I put the uh, cake in the oven, started baking it, and I thought, you know what? Now that I got it done, why don't I look? at the recipe just to see how good I did, right? Uh, I understand. So I backwards, right? You know, that's like a lot of Christians, you know, we start a relationship and we do it our way and we get in the middle of it and we're like, oh, I probably should check what God thinks about this. You know, how does God say I should build my relationship? How does God say I can build my business? How does God say I should walk and talk? What does God say? So what happened when you read there? Well, I noticed I missed two ingredients. Oh, well, it's only two. You could have missed three. I know, right? It wasn't too bad. The I one mean, was okay. Well, the one was salt. I forgot salt. No big deal. It's only like a teaspoon salt, uh, anyway, right? We got salt shakers anyhow, so yeah, that would have so been okay. you can okay. add salt on top of your cake. <laughs> would you guys like some salt for the cake? That's what it's missing. It. We didn't put enough salt on their cake. That's why you want us to get some salt and you can try it again and see if it's better? <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah, and then I realized I forgot the oil. Well, it's already been baking for about 10 minutes You now. didn't use car oil, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering there. I thought we were going to be, that's going to say you guys are eating petroleum. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, um, yeah, I used the canola oil, and I just, uh, it's a two-thirds cup, but, you know, like I said, I can measure it. So yeah. I just poured it on top of the uh the cake. Hey, saving to... utensils, <laughs> half baked, it's all good. <laughs> it was half baked. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone want to try this cake now? <laughs> Does anyone want to go spit your cake out that you ate? How was that cake anyhow, Justin? Was it good? <laughs> no, I don't think I don't think that's what he said. I thought he said it was effing awful or something like that. <laughs> this is what I thought I heard stage i'm not sure but maybe being it's justin i highly doubt that but maybe just maybe just maybe all right so then the recipe it said it should only take 25 minutes who wants to 25 25 50 minutes later it was maybe done maybe <laughs> yeah. well you know you want to make sure you killed everything that was in there right yeah it was uh, very watery and runny and uh <laughs> Finally, 50 minutes. So it took me twice as long 
by doing it my way. But look at the result. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. I've got a text from a friend. Oh, yeah? I sent, yes. And I'm going to quote his exact. All words. right, good, good, okay. good. And these are, the, these are the friends that you need in your life. Yes, these are the friends you need to have in your life. Okay, so I, I sent him a picture of my cake. I'm going to find his exact words. This is really good. And this is honest truth. This is exactly what he said. He said, you're such a good baker. Say? <laughs> Say that? <laughs> I mean, that, we all need friends like that, right? I mean, why do you want godly, honest friends in your life when you can just do that kind of stuff? I don't know who that friend was. I think it was me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always on your side, Tony. It if was, you do it, it's it right. It was you. It was you definitely say? Terrence. See? <laughs> you guys can go sit down. You don't have to stay up here now. You, you want to take your cake with you? Okay, give it to Garrett. Garrett, she wants you to eat her cake for her. Because, you know, the two shall be one flesh. Tell us what you think of it. You can share it with Maria, too, because Maria wants some. I can tell by that face she's envious. <laughs> so, I guess now I'm going to have a bite of my cake. Tell me, tell me how that is. You know it's going to be good, Tony. Oh, yeah. Oh, Chef Antonio. Oh, just wonderful. All right, so what's the moral of the story? <laughs> Don't eat Tony's cake. That's the moral of the story. The moral of the story is, is this is Christianity, Okay. This oh. is why you can't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to go wash this out. But before I do, <laughs> I want to say one more thing. Not only am I a chef, I'm You're also Jesus a Christian. Freak. Say he's a, he's, he's he can't lie. He did it right. You got, the, got t-shirt. the t-shirt. Once you have the t-shirt, that's why I wear mine. Right. I'm a Christian because I put a shirt Be a on. Christian. <laughs> I mean, you put a little cross in the back of your car, you know, get a little St. Jude up in your dashboard, you're in, Mary. You know, pick one, anyone, just so you have one. Well, thanks for making that cake. How is it, Garrett? Well, some people... <laughs> yeah, he was dropped as a kid and he hit his head, so you have to excuse him. He's slightly challenged. <coughs> So do you understand the word picture here? We sit there and we come to church and we try to do it our way and we try to mix everything our way and we try to build our relationships our way and we try to build our lives our way and we try to walk with God our way. What's that mean? You know, well, I know God says to give this way, but I don't need to give this way. I can give that way. And I know God tells me to do this, but I don't really have to do all that. And, you know, I can put a little bit of that together. How many know that when you follow the recipe that John and Paul were talking about, that there's victory in this thing? Does everyone understand that? When I walk with God and I talk with God, and when I... When I build a marriage God's way, when I build a relationship God's way, when I build a business God's way, when, when I do my own work in my own life God's way, you know, when I create a prayer life, and by the way, a prayer life isn't something where you sit there and say, I pray two minutes a day, or I pray here, or I pray there. It's about when you literally get alone with God and you talk to God. Now, you can do that driving down the road. I hope you're paying attention to the road. But it's a place where you find God. God has given us a plan in the Word of God. Everyone in here has it. You all have the recipe book. You might not, you know what, it's really cool. My phone's not here, it's over there. But I got the YouVersion Bible app in my, my phone. I've got like, I think there's like 27 different versions of the Bible. I got like 27 Bibles in my pocket all the time. They even read to me. I mean, I got Bible you know, scriptures and all that stuff, and you can do Bible studies there, and I do them with some people, and, and I don't want to say any names, but, you know, I send them to people like Maria, and they never read them. I'm sorry, that slept out. I didn't mean to say that. She ignores it and just deletes my request and all those kind of things. Oh, it has to be super long. Okay. But, no, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding with her. Seriously, I know she's spiritual. I know she reads her Bible. I know she does those kind of things. But the key is, if I do this life God's way, this thing works. Now, I've met a lot of 
Christians who have the t-shirt and have the thing in their dash that they sit there and say, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work in my life. I've tried God. No, you tried it your way. And if you're here this morning and your life is still a mess and you've been trying God, it's not about trying God, it's about getting into the instructions. And that's what I want you to experience. I don't want you to experience religion. I want you to experience transformation. I want you to experience what it's like, and someone's going to be offended, not to need antidepressant drugs, not to be afraid where you can leave your house, not to be afraid because you know what? We serve this miracle working God that said, I give you a sound mind. I cast out all fear. I give you power. I give you love. Now, I know you're like, well, you don't know what my doctor said. Are you going to trust him or are you going to trust God? Now, God wants you to live in victory. God wants you to live in power. Or you're sitting there and you try to build a relationship and God says, build a relationship this way. And you're saying, I don't have to do that, honey. We can do it our way. In America now, you watch any TV program. What's the first thing they do? They meet the first night. They have sex the same night. And they get up the next day and say, let's build a relationship. Dude, do you realize that is demonic and completely backward from what God said? God said, build a relationship. And at the end of it, when you get married, you have sex. Now, I know that's old-fashioned to a lot of people. But you know what? That's God's plan. And we keep doing it the wrong way and go, I just don't understand it. My whole relationship, I can never have a good relationship. Everyone I meet is just a jerk. Women are evil. Men are dogs. And we say all those kind of things. Well, it's because you're doing it wrong. Because you're not walking and talking God's way and doing it God's way. Now, I'm just picking that out. Don't get mad at me. There's lots of other things, too. You know, the Bible tells us straight up, and if you ever think about even going in business, the Bible tells you never to go in business if you're a Christian with somebody who's not a Christian. That's God's word. And yet, I, I did it. Where did it get me? Bankruptcy. Where did it get me? Stolen from. Where did it get me? All those kind of things. Why? Because just because they wear the Christian t-shirt doesn't mean they have a Christian in their heart. You know, wearing the t-shirt's easy. Jesus is bigger than Sundays. Whoa, that's really cool. But it doesn't make me a Christian. You see, God wants you to start walking with him. As he gives you these opportunities, he wants you to start doing things his way. That means honesty with integrity. Yeah, it's hard. But you know what? That's where God's blessing is. That's where God's anointing is. That's where God's presence is. That's where God's power is. That's where God's spirit is. And I'm not here to single out anyone. I'm trying to get you all to understand it. This thing Jesus said we can be lived in victory. Paul lived it in victory. John lived it in victory. Peter lived it in victory. And I could go on and on. Timothy lived it in victory. And all these people, I mean, there was prostitutes that, that were radically changed and became followers of Jesus. There was tax collectors that were basically the dogs of the society that ripped people off and cheated everybody that came along, but they found Jesus, their lives were radically changed, and they became his disciples, and all their life, they're now the founders of Christianity, because there's people there that didn't believe a bit. There was one guy named Simon the Sorcerer, he's a sorcerer, and he found Jesus, because he saw the power of God, and he's like, I want that power too. You see, God wants you to do it his way. I'm not here to beat you up, I'm here to let you understand. How many want your life to end up like this? Well, all the ingredients for the cake are in here, right, Tony? They're all there. What's the problem with them? He didn't measure them, and he didn't do it the right way. You see, this is what we can do with God. And then we try to sell it to the world, and we wonder why the world doesn't want our Jesus. Because we're not following what God said to do. We're trying to make it justified in my head, and I'm trying to justify it in my mind. But the end result should be like this. And trust me, this is good cake. I'll sell you a piece for 10 bucks. <laughs> if you want to try it, you got $10. I'll share. I got four pieces left. I'll give it to the kids' fund. All right, it just went to $50 a piece now. <laughs> it's good cake, it tastes good. It's homemade. It's the best chocolate cake I've ever had in my life. And you know what? That's like Jesus. And I know some of you look at people and you're like, oh, I know they're like Jesus. Yeah, Pastor Terry, you just, it's because he's paid to do it. Trust me, I don't make enough money to be this excited about it. <laughs> I'm just telling you. And if you had to pastor you, you would understand why I'm really not excited about it. All right? You just got to get that. It's not the money. It's because he's in here. It's like, people ask my wife, is he always that rowdy? No, I'm worse. 
She told me this morning I was tickler, and she's like, you're so annoying. I said, change your perception. I'm fun. She's going to. She's going to get it. She is. I keep praying for her. You know, we've got to get this thing. God heals. How many know that? God heals. He said, I give you a sound mind. I'll heal your body. Well, why doesn't it work? Because we don't do it in the right order. You see, you want healed so that you can live the same sinful life and do the same things that you've always done and just do it without pain. God says, I heal people who will walk in my call and who want to do the things I'm calling them to do. Every one of them in the Bible, he walked up to and he healed them. He said, now go show yourself to the priest. Or he said, go sin no more. It was all for the glory of God. You see, God doesn't want you glorified. Half the people in the church, if God healed them today, they would be the same thing they're doing now. You wouldn't go out and you wouldn't tell anybody. You wouldn't do anything different. If God healed your mind, you'd be the same person. Until you're willing to say, God, I want to do it your way. God, I want to put it together your way. I want you to change my life that, God, people can taste my life. So this is Christianity. This is good cake. That's man's Christianity. That's man's walk with God. That was where man was in control. This one was the one where somebody, somewhere, sometime, I don't know who, where the recipe come from? A friend from work. I don't know where she got the recipe from, but you know what? It's just like Christianity. You know that? That it came from a friend. It's someone who experienced it and they tasted it. And Janine got the recipe. Why'd you get the recipe? I didn't like chocolate cake until she gave me a piece. You know how many people don't like Jesus until you give them a piece of the real thing? And they're like, man, that stuff right there, that's good stuff. Why? Because you had the real thing. You didn't have the man-made garbage. It's religion and the way that you're trying to live. But you're doing it God's way. And listen, as long as you keep doing it your way, this is going to be the end result of your life. Every relationship you make is going to be this way. And you're going to blame everybody else. And you're going to talk to everybody else and say, well, that's uh, it's just, men are just a bunch of pigs and dogs. They only think about one thing all the time. Yes, we think about that a lot. But we do think about other things too. But I want to tell you what, as long as you live it, all the ingredients are here. I want you to get that. Everything is in there. Except it was done the wrong way. Everything is in there. And you know what? I don't know who ever thought of this recipe. But someone figured it out somewhere. And someone else tasted it and said, can I have the recipe? And they made it. And someone else ate it. And they tasted it. And they wanted the recipe. And someone else ate it. Doesn't that sound like Christianity? Going from person to person to person. I'm not talking about inviting them to church. I'm like, man, you won't believe what God did in my life. Man, you just got to hang around me. I know I used to be that way. But man, I started, oh, it's good. And they're like, I don't know what happened to you. I know what you used to be like. And my, your life's radically different. And I want to experience that change of life. That's what this gospel's about. Would you stand with me? So who wants to buy a piece of cake for 100 bucks? <laughs> Inflation. I'm sorry. Prices are going up. Yeah, I better move that so it doesn't end up on the floor, huh? Yeah, Ray wants to take that home. You can take it home, Ray. It's all good. Just bring the pan back. Someone in the first service said, I said, who do you think would eat this? And the guy said, my dog would. <laughs> After church, I'm like, I want to see if your dog eats it. He said, like, I can't give it to him. It's chocolate. That's a lie. I'm just telling you. My dog lives on chocolate. Ask Bethany. He gets dark chocolate. He gets white chocolate. He gets chocolate chocolate. And he loves it. And he's still normal. Hey, he's 16 years old, so just saying. Don't go home and feed your dog chocolate, because if it dies, you'll be mad at me. That was not a word from God. But I want to ask you this morning. You know, it's not by chance you're in this service. You were divinely appointed to walk into this service, and God knew I would preach this message on this day because he gave it to me last week. And you know what? I gave you the real piece of cake. And even if you don't like cake, it was good cake. And it made you want more. You know that? 
when I eat Janine's cake, that's why she only gives me like one every year. Because I would gain weight if I had Janine's cake sitting on my counter all the time. I would walk past and I would eat that cake all the time. And that's why Tony only gets it once every three years. <laughs> Where's your life? Who's in charge of it? How are you building it? Pastor Terry, how do I fix it? It's really easy. We serve this miracle working God that can take that awful cake and take it into the good cake. Because he is Chef Le Jesus. <laughs> and he did not teach Chef El Antonio to bake. I want you to get that today. It's about sitting there and saying, okay, God, he's right. I've tried this Christianity thing. Maybe you have. I don't believe in God. I don't blame you. And all I can tell you, if you've ever tried Christianity before this and it got burned and it stunk, I'm sorry that somebody gave you that version. But this morning, I'm telling you to experience the real thing. I'm telling you to experience that cake of a miracle-working God that loved you so much that he put his son on a cross. That loved the world so much that the day that he died on the cross, the veil of the temple ripped from top to bottom. Now, that doesn't mean much to you because when you think about the veil of the temple, it was actually a division from mankind and God because if God, people got in God's presence, Tim, they would die. Josephus writes and says that the veil of the temple was the width of a hand's breadth. All right, that's that big. I got a small hand, so I don't know whose hand he was looking at, but it was that big. All right? So from there to there was how thick that temple was. He also writes, Josephus is a historian, an ancient Jewish historian, that it says that when the Day of Atonement came, that they had two oxen on either side of the curtain to pull it back so that the priest could go by because no man would be able to move that curtain back. That's how heavy it was. So that nobody died getting in the presence of God. But you know what God did whenever Jesus died? It says he tore the temple, tore the, the veil of the temple from the top to the bottom. Isn't that awesome? Why do you do it that way? It didn't say from the bottom to the top, it said top to bottom. Because man couldn't heal the relationship, because man couldn't separate, because man couldn't do it. But you know what? The Father in heaven said, okay, Jesus died, the price is paid. All men are now able to come to me. And I've heard people, pastors say, it's so that we can get to God. No, that wasn't what it was. It was God's coming out party to mankind. It was God saying, I don't have to hide behind the curtain anymore. And just like Jesus was going to come running out of the grave three days later on Easter Sunday, we're going to celebrate that. It was the Father sitting there and saying, I no longer have to live around a bunch of gold and around this place. And I don't have to just live where people are around me in my presence. But I have the ability now to go into your heart. I have the ability to get into your mind. And that's why I can heal it. And that's why I can change your relationship. And that's why anywhere you'll let me. If you'll tear your veil now, I'm out of my veil so if you'll move your veil and tear your veil and let me into that area of your life I'll heal your life I'll radically change you that other people want to experience your love and experience your touch and they're going to want your chocolate cake man is that awesome and that's what God's doing this morning in this place he's trying to say I know you tried religion ooh I know you tried church before ooh but he's saying, man, have some cake. Experience me. Experience who I am. The recipe. The right way. And God will radically change your life. And I don't know if that's you today, but it's really easy. This is what you do. God, I really screwed up. And I want your forgiveness. Lord, I want to do it your way. However you want to say that, that's all you got to do. You got to sit there and say, God, I've made a mess. I've made enough bad cakes. I've made some really bad cakes in my life. Anyone else? Well, you know what? You can change that this morning. You can change it by making up your mind today that, you know what? 
God, okay, I let go of my life. I don't want to be in control anymore. I don't want to do it this way anymore. I don't want to walk this way anymore. I don't want to talk this way anymore. I don't want to act this way anymore. I don't want to be this person anymore. I don't want to have this relationship anymore. Uh, Lord, I'm going to give it to you. God, whatever that looks like. If you get rid of this other person, praise God. If they get it, praise God. But as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. That's the choice you've got to make. That's why Jesus looked at Peter, James, and John, and he never said, hey, you want to come to church with me? Tim, you picked the wrong seat. He walked up to every one of them and said, follow me. You know what every one of them did? It said they forsook everything they had and followed Jesus. They didn't sit there and say, I wonder how God I'm going to... Peter, I can't, Jesus. I'm a fisherman. If I, if I don't keep fishing, how am I going to make money? Matthew, I'm a tax collector. I'm pretty well off. I, I can't do that. How am I going to do that? If You don't understand, Jesus. I, can, I can't just follow you. I mean, oh, that's really easy for other people, but you don't understand what I've done, and you don't understand where I've been, and you don't understand what my life's like. You don't understand my job. You don't understand where I'm at. And we make up all these excuses. God's just looking at you saying, and Jesus is turning to you saying, man, why don't you start having cake my way? Follow me. That's the moral of this message. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I wonder if there's someone in here this morning that God dealt with your heart in this message and you say, I want to start following God His way. I want you to just raise your hand and say, God, right here I am. I want you to change my life. I want you to transform me, Lord. I want to know you differently. I see hands all over this place. Anyone else? It's your choice. And man, this thing's free. It's cake. Anyone else? Last chance, because we're going to pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus over every person in this building. God, I gave them your word picture. And God, I thank you so much for the way you speak to my heart. And God, I thank you for cake. I thank you, Father, for the recipe. And God, I just pray for the people that raised their hand. God, oh, Lord, I want you to let them experience you. God, just come down. They invited you into their life. They invited you into their heart. God, move people out of their life that shouldn't be there. Lord, push people away that shouldn't be there. God, let them begin to understand that, God, you're a miracle-working, supernatural God. Show yourself to them. Lord, let them be like Moses on the mountain. Lord, show me your glory, and God, show it to them. That, Lord, your kingdom would come and your will would be done. In Jesus' name. Everyone said? There, you sealed it. Now, you see, this is opportunities. Because you know what I know? I know there's somebody in here that you're like, I should raise my hand, but I'm not going to. Because someone might see my hand. Someone might realize that it's wrong. You missed the opportunities. But here's the cool part about God. He says, my mercy is new every morning. I don't know if you ever read that scripture or not, but I remember the first time I read that scripture and I was like, wow, God's mercy is new every morning. You know, Tim, every morning I have brand new mercy. And I was like dwelling with God and God said, Terry, you missed it. I'm like, what I miss? He said, it's morning somewhere on this earth every second of every day. He said, my mercy is new every second of every day because I'm God and I know that. You see, they didn't know that when they were penning the words that his mercy was new every morning. They didn't understand time zones. They didn't understand how the earth moved. They didn't understand it. But you know what? The one who created the heavens and the earth did. And he's like, someday they're going to read that and they're going to realize that every second of every day, no matter where you're at, my mercy is new right now. And you can start over and you can begin again. You might have fell down. You know, the Bible says righteous fall seven times, but they get back up. Listen, maybe you're watching online and you've been watching this. God's dealing with you and he wants you to raise your hand. He wants you to pray the prayer. He wants you to give in and say, okay, God, I've tried religion. I've tried all those things, but I want to experience you. He's calling you. I want you to get this. If you ever do not forget a message, don't forget this one. When you find yourself, if you refuse to do it, and by the way, if, even if you don't refuse to do it, you're going to make a mess of your life sometimes. And you're going to get the ingredients the wrong way. But just remember, his mercy's new. And you don't have to be Chef Antonio. Because you know Chef Le Jesus. That sounds better than Antonio, just saying. Chef Le Jesus. He had to say, yeah. Humble yourself before the Lord right there. 
hey, Jesus loves you, he thinks you're amazing. Now listen, I need two kids because we're gonna put kids with pots back there. So if you brought some offering, why do I wanna do this? Because I want the kids to see how much you guys love them. And they're gonna have pots. So if you'd like to give some money for that room over there to be redone that your kids are enjoying, maybe you say, I don't have kids, your grandkids will enjoy it. Because here's the cool part, when God, you start getting your life together with God, God's going to start bringing generation after generation after generation that's going to want your cake. You see, we're not just doing this so that the rock church gets bigger and I can say, and that's one of the reasons, by the way, we don't count people, because people are like, how big is church? I'm like, well, if I had to guess, if everyone show up the same day, I don't want us to be about numbers, I want us to be about life. These kids are going to grow up. The reason we do this fun center is, you know what? I don't know if these kids will ever darken the doors of this church. But I had the chance last night with a family that I got to spend more time with and had more fun with and teach them to climb. The one kid looked at me when I left. He's like, thank you. He's 13 years old. You know what I know someday? I know someday he's going to be somewhere and he's going to need Jesus. He's going to be like, I need to get back to church. He's going to be like, I need to find a church like that. Not this church, but like that. And that's what it's all about. It's about future generations, about touching people. Man, I hate to quit, but I got to. You're going to sing Miracle Power? What are you singing? All right. You guys want to sing Miracle Power again? Okay, when they're doing Miracle Power, you can go, hey, cakes for sale, $150 slice. I got four slices, but I think I got another cake back there. It's mine, but those I'll sell for $500 a slice. All right, just let you know. Hey, Jesus loves you. thinks you're amazing. Oh, yeah, we got two parbay pizzas. Today they're on special, $49.95. Tony made them. They're good. No, he didn't. I'm kidding. They're, I don't know what they are, but they're for sale back there. This is for the lost and lonely For the broken and afraid This is for those who are hurting Hope and help is on the way In these battles of addiction Fear is chasing after me Whatever trouble I am facing I will lift my hands and say Working one day. 
right, sing it. The darkest night when I cannot see, still my soul will say, I may not know what a day may bring, I know who brings a day on the darkest night when I cannot see, still my soul will say, my soul will say, Ooh! I believe in a miracle power, in a Have a blessed day. If you'd like to buy a slice of my $250 cake, see me after church. <laughs>